Welcome to the SRS Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron J. Babiar, and I'm the Training Director of Support Raising Solutions. Whether you're a new ministry worker or a veteran looking to increase your competence and confidence, Support Raising Solutions seeks to bless you in your quest to be a spiritually healthy, vision-driven, fully funded Great Commission worker. My guest today is Jamie Sewell, who uh, is really in charge and helps lead the team that does member care for the Center for Mission Mobilization. Uh, Jamie and her husband, Chris, uh, currently reside in College Station, Texas. And uh, this is, uh, I guess, the ninth episode in a long series that we're slowly kind of leaking out over time during 2021 on being spiritually healthy. And of course, being spiritually healthy is the most important aspect of raising support. So first of all, Jamie, before we dig into our topic today, welcome back to the Stress Podcast. Thanks, Aaron. Good to be back. All right. Let's have a little fun to get started. First of all, uh, I know you and I are approximately the same age. Let's just say over 30, under 50 and leave okay. it at that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, so uh, as, a, as someone who was coming of age in the 80s and 90s, mm-hmm. what were some your favorite bands, secular bands. You can you can throw in Christian bands if you want to, but but we're, I'm mainly asking, what are some of your favorite secular bands from way back in the day? Yeah. Um, what? All right, so bands or singers. It could be solo artists. Okay. So of course, you two, REM. I liked a band called Yaz. Oh yeah. Yeah. They were good. They, they were some of my favorites. Um, what about you? Uh, I was really into Millie Vanilli for a while, and that went sideways on me. <laughs> I loved Millie Vanilli, and it did go sideways. Uh-huh. Just, uh, took your rug out. I don't want to say that it was all appropriate, so if you <laughs> look this stuff up, you should probably look for the edited content. Um, I did love 80s rap. I really did. Okay. So, who are some of your favorites? Uh, oof, uh, so Beastie Boys, yes. uh, DMC, Vanilla Ice, even MC Hammer. I really it's a little poppy stuff, but like that was in my tape deck in my in my 1987 Chevy Celebrity <laughs> for eight years. Okay, so. <laughs> what about Salt and Pepper? That was with the, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Oh, yeah, those was those were the jams. Again, I cannot be held accountable. Right, right. Content. Of, so, I mean, the older you get, the more you're like, why was I listening to that? I know, I know. The music was good. I was I wasn't listening to the lyrics, mom. Okay. Oh my gosh, I've got the best story for that. My husband for his birthday got a cassette single, and the B side of it was Wild Thing. So oh. he got oh. it for he got this he got the the track the tape for the other song but when he got to the place where he was going the game or whatever at high school um he had that tape in his tape deck and his parents and beknownst to him came to switch cars with him oh no and back in the day for those of us with <laughs> technology those cassettes automatically flipped and yes. you had no control i mean you did if you pushed some buttons but if you didn't touch anything you were going to hear that yes that other side whether you wanted to or not that's right so they get in the car and they hear this and they come into his the game where he's with all his friends and they pull him out and they're like do no. you like to do the wild thing oh no 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 no, no. it was mortification sorry oh, my goodness. um hey friends please maybe don't don't google that song no uh, don't it's uh yeah not good not no. Oh, that's hilarious, though, because I know Chris, and I love that it happened to him. Yeah, (laughs) it was mortifying. (laughs) Oh, that would be. That would be. All right, so now that we're way off topic on being spiritually healthy. Yes, absolutely. uh, (laughs) back in. We're going to try and rein this back in, uh, because Chris was going through a season of life. Is that how we're doing? No. (laughs) Um, No, actually, we we wanted to talk about how uh, raising support, uh, yeah, being spiritually healthy is the most important thing, but also the season for most of us when we raise the bulk of our support, uh, as mentioned in the previous episode, it's it's a hard it's a hard season. Mm. It's not an easy thing, and yet it is typically a season. Uh, I know that the bulk of my support was raised uh, during during a certain period of life, and I can tell you, like right when it was, because I remember it, because it was a hard season. Our our, our kids uh, were elementary age, um, and uh, we had I had been coaching baseball, and I needed to stop that. Like I remember a lot about that season, partially Jamie, because 
uh, I had to, I had to change up my schedule like dramatically for us to be able to raise what we needed. Um, Mm -hmm. and my wife was also going through, I mean, that's actually when we found out she had a brain tumor. That was just a hard season for a lot of reasons, but, um, it was definitely a change. And so I, I think sometimes when people are trying to raise support, they try and just like add it in, right? They're like, oh, yeah. this is just like, you know, it's kind of like watching Monday Night Football. It's just something I'm going to do yeah. once a week and it'll all work out. And that's just not what support raising is, is it, yeah. Jamie? No, I think that that's such a good um such a good word for people to hear. And just to, it's, it's like this paradox, right? It's like, it's, it's a season. And so you need to be focused, but it's also a season of life that God has you in. So you don't just need to like put your nose to the grindstone. You need to actually be in this season, you know, yeah. enjoy this season even. Yeah, be present. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so as we, as we dig into this from a spiritually healthy standpoint, um, you and I talked back on, I think it's probably come up in more than one episode, but I know, I know in episode eight, we talked about reframing. Mm-hmm. So as people are going to reframe, as they're going to look differently in, 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 in how they, they live life and do ministry and, uh, and which raising support is ministry. Um, yeah. that's reframing it. Right. Yeah. Uh, t- tell us more about that. You know, I I remember hearing that early on, that it is ministry. And I just don't think I really believed it at first, you know, for a long time. Um, I just saw it as like the work to do to get to the ministry, right? That it's like you, it's like a, you just have a necessary evil. You know, you have to do this. Oof, oof. Which we don't like that term. And there's a lot of podcast on that, but if we're being honest, that's how some people feel, at least early on. That's pretty typical. Yes. And it's, and it is a, a lie to be combated. You know, it's a, that's why I I bring it up because we, I I mean, I remember that's how I felt that I just have to get through this. And, but that, that process of reframing and choosing to believe, no, this, this is ministry and leaning in more of that, right. Rather than the the grindstone effect of like, just do it to get to where I need to be, but rather okay, if this is ministry, all these people who've gone before me say that this is actually ministry. Mm -hmm. They have experienced that this is actually ministry. Then maybe, just maybe, Mm -hmm. this is actually ministry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if it is ministry, but it's it's a different ministry than perhaps what you were looking forward to, than what you feel prepared for, signed up for, all that kind of stuff. Um, There's probably some spiritual work that needs to be done in your in in your heart. Um, if not, it's just some practical understandings in your head. Uh, and of course, more than that to, to get there. And, uh, I think a big part of that though, is, is just starting, starting with the Lord Mm -hmm. being honest about that. Yeah. So as people move towards a, a primary season of raising support, um, yeah, we we need to talk to God. And and before Mm -hmm. I'll ask you to speak more into what does it look like about talking to God, Jamie, but before we do that, um, I don't know if I said this very well before, so I'm going to frame it one more time. Um, most people I know who are fully funded, they had a, a primary season when they raised the bulk of their support. Right. Over time, they often need to raise more because God blesses their ministry and the vision increases and it's going to cost more to do more. But it's like, praise the Lord, great problem to have. God's, God's fulfilling our vision. Yeah. He's given us more. So that that's a reason. Uh, sometimes you, you might lose supporters. You know, yeah. And it's not it might feel like it. It's really not the end of the world. I mean, you lose a supporter here or there. Um, If you're losing a massive amount of supporters, uh, okay, there's some diagnostic issues that need to be got that, you know, that need to be ran into. But anyway, I'll just say it's normal for Steve Shadrach, for myself, for Jamie. Uh, You know, we've been fully funded for years, but it's normal in certain times we pause and need to raise some more support, whether it's, whether it's a little bit more, a lot of bit more. Um, And it's not because we haven't been faithful or anything like that. It's just, it's kind of the nature of, of it. But for most people, the bulk of their support gets raised uh, over about six months time. Some people it's three months, some people it's a year. Uh, That's what we find for most people that actually get training, they get coaching, like they, they're not just trying to wing it. Um, Even then, yeah, it's pretty normal for it to take six months. So all that being said, 
as people are in that season, perhaps for the first time, or or perhaps, perhaps Jamie, they never raised their full support in the first place. And now they're realizing this has to look different. Yeah. Um, as far as that season goes, what, what does that look like to even be honest and, and, and ask God about it as, as you embark or even as you're doing it? Hmm. Yeah. Isn't that where it all starts, right? Asking God, you know, he says, you have not because you ask not. You, mm. um, you know, he tells us to ask him, um, ask for wisdom. You know, I think just coming to that that place where, okay, God, I, I don't really feel like this is ministry or I can't, I, you know, I know that this is going to be this big season or whatever it is you're, you know, these different things you're thinking about coming into the season or going into a new season, but letting it start there. God help my mind to um, to align with yours to to be tuned into truth um, to um, really show me help me to have open eyes to see what you are doing in this season and to not miss it to not wish it away um, but to really fully engage here um, I just think that that's so uh, so big it, you know take time to focus on the fact that this is actually an act of the great commission. Mm. You know, we're helping. It's a form of discipleship in, in teaching them to obey all I've commanded. Right. And, mm. um, that was a big one for me was realizing it was a big aha moment. Wow. This, the reason that I'm doing this, the reason that it's important to me is because it really is it's discipleship and that, is important to me. Mm, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. And so um, that comes back to if, if we're going to embrace the season as the term that we're using, yeah. if we're going to do that, that should change our posture. Yeah. That should change our perspective. Um, and uh, there, there's a lot that that goes with that. And uh, you you brought up on one or two episodes uh, about revisiting your why mm -hmm. often. Tell us tell us more about that. And from this perspective, yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's just so to me that's so important. It is it is central. And I you know even like if you, if you think about that word, revisit your why, making that W a capital because that Y is a person and in the person of Christ, you know, and, um, he is our great why, um, and coming back to the, the, what trickles down out of that. So that's, if he is the center of that, what has he called me to do? You know, mm -hmm. what has he called me to in this season? And, and that I want to be faithful. I want to cultivate faithfulness in this area because it's where he has me. And so if he has me here, it's my good and it's for the good of others as well. And so like, yeah, coming back to that, revisiting and, and allowing that to, um, you know, <laughs> think about like starting the day and finishing the day, allowing that to just bookend our days. Of, I'm, I'm in this season for, there's a purpose for it. And I want to wholeheartedly be here because this is where God has me now. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, once we're in a season, and we're we're working for the, we're working for the Lord. We're working on a process. Uh, it it can be it can be pretty well, really, um, really hard. And sometimes sometimes it's not like we keep talking about how hard it is. Sometimes it's really not that hard. Sometimes you find a good rhythm, and things are things are healthy, and you're trusting the process that God has put in front of you. And hopefully, yeah. you, you know you learn from reading the God Ask or going through the boot camp and having a coach. So like, sometimes that can just, you're working, you're working for the Lord, you're not working for you, you're working for the Lord, you're trusting the process. But, yeah. but even then, there are some things to, to, to keep in mind. And um, one of them is, it's time with the Lord. And sometimes it's like, well, yeah, I'm working for the Lord all day. Like, I don't like, of course, I'm spending time with yeah. the Lord. I'm working for him. Well, that that's different, isn't it? Jane? Yeah. Ooh, yes. You know, um, it reminds me of like when my husband was in seminary and how one of the things that they told him was that a lot of times um, when people are going through seminary, they start to neglect their personal time with the Lord because they're 
they're they're saturated with God's word and you know learning about the Lord and everything, but there that guarding of that relationship and um, that it's a relationship. We want to spend time with Him and um, man, I just think that's so so important to prioritize that and guard it, um, especially and and you know I think you said on several in several other several other in, uh, instances that um, the way that that we act in support raising often trickles into our time in our ministry, whatever mm-hmm. it is. And so what a sweet time to prioritize your time with the Lord. You know, mm-hmm. what an important time to do that because you are, um, the rhythms that you develop and the disciplines and that you develop in faith and, um, support raising are going to carry over. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so true. Yeah, I, I was, uh, yeah, been there, done that um, when it comes to trying to do a lot of other things that that are keeping me in the word already, whether it's like, you know, for a community group or a Sunday school or for a sermon or something like that right. and, and trying to raise support. Um, and so you just feel like I'm, I'm kind of going from my Christian work to my Christian work. Um, and if you don't pause and go, well, you know, that's all important, yeah. but less so than a connection to your creator. Yeah. Um, wow. That's, uh, yeah, if you don't have that pause, uh, you're, you're going to be hurting. And yeah. I, I, I'm probably preaching to the choir here. Everybody probably knows that. The right. problem is, um, yeah, are you living it? Right. <laughs> That's something different, right? What is that? Can I ask you, what does that look like for you? Yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. Um, so I, uh, I don't get too much into personality stuff, but I'm pretty high energy. I'm mm-hmm. very comfortable in a, a large room with a lot of people. Like I don't have whatever, whatever that fear thing is that a lot of people have, like, like speaking in public. Like I don't yeah. have, that. um, so I'm kind of broken in, in a fun way. Um, <laughs> but, but the flip side is when it's time for me to, to pull back, I yeah. pull back, um, further and harder than a lot of people that you, you might call introverts. Um, mm. and so for me, it is, it is alone. I mean, it's alone, alone. It's like, yeah. don't call me. I'm not checking my email. Um, and, uh, mm. so like if it's in the middle of the day and I'm just like overdoing it, I'll just go in my room and shut the door and I may yeah. or may not sleep, but I might lay on my bed for an hour and talk to the Lord. Yeah. Uh, I might not talk to the Lord. I might go to sleep. Like I'm not always super spiritual. Okay. Uh, but, That's but, a spiritual uh, thing. Uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> it is. It is. Right. <laughs> and, um, so like, that's, that's kind of how I'm under stress. Like I'm just going to come and pull away. And actually, I've actually found that that can be healthy. You know, I yeah. know it right. Um, I think when I'm not under stress, uh, I still need to be spiritually healthy. So for me, yeah, it is, it is scripture. I've never been a read the Bible study and do it in a group kind of guy. I mean, I am in a men's group that meets almost weekly. Um, yeah. that doesn't feed my soul though. Yeah. I enjoy that. Other people are like, oh, that was the best part of my week. And I'm like, well, that was mm-hmm. a part of my week. Yeah. Uh, uh, which, again, I just, you know, learn differently. But for me, it's, it's time alone with the Lord. It's being mm-hmm. honest about yeah. about pain, about struggle, about wins, about yeah. losses, about, um, yeah. So I, mean, I find myself in Proverbs a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like the old, like, read the proverb of the day. So, like, yep. so if, if, if today's September 10th, I'm. I mean, Proverbs 10. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully reading Proverbs 10. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, uh, I'm not a journaler. I wish I was. I'm, mm. I'm kind of jealous of the people that, that comes naturally out of them. Uh, mm-hmm. That's not me. Uh, and then there's other times where I just, I get really in my head about something and then I will have an intentional conversation uh, with, with, with Marky, my wife, yeah. um, or with uh, one of my closer friends or a board member or someone who's go, Hey, I'm, Here's what I'm thinking. I kind mm-hmm. of get perspective, and I realize that that ties into that. To me, that's part of my process of of seeking the Lord. Yeah, yeah. You know? And uh, but boy, if I'm not listening with Him, if I'm not, if I'm just doing the talking and I'm not listening. That's yeah. not good. Yeah. Um, I like the examine. Some people are familiar mm-hmm. with that. It's a it's a yeah. style of prayer. Um. Yeah, a mentor introduced me to that like 15 years ago. Right, actually, but not too long. Um, not let long before I raised my funding. Um, and so that, that was something that really helped me slow down and go, mm-hmm. wow, wow. So, um, and then last but not least, I'll just say I do better with exercise. Yeah. So I'm not the world's foremost athlete, but 
yeah, man, like, I don't know. It's a spiritual thing for me to go, to go mm-hmm. shoot hoops by myself, uh, yeah. to go ride my bicycle, like 20 miles. I'm not even kidding you. Like that, just like yeah. that, that time alone with the Lord while I'm getting my pulse up. Um, yeah, I come off that sometimes on, I'm, re- I'm ready for the fight. Like I'm, yeah. ready, I'm ready for yeah. what's next. So, um, yeah. that's me. What about you? What's that's really good. You? Well, I wanted to touch, like, I, I will totally share, but, um, something that really stood out because I heard it in multiple times. And what you said was the honest, getting honest with the Lord. And I think that is the key. Like that is a huge piece. It's, and it's even in your voice, Aaron, you sl- like, there's a slow down when we realize that we're talking about this relationship with the Lord. Um, it's, it's special, you know? And, and so whatever that looks like for the listener, um, knowing what, stirs your affections for the Lord. Like you said, bicycling and, um, you know, that alone time. And, um, Uh, and you know, praise and worship. I'm not, but like sometimes I'll put on like a great worship set and I'll put in an earphone and I'll walk the dog and like, I'm worshiping the Lord and walking. Absolutely, It doesn't sound like, I realize that's not too crazy. Most of us can do that, but yeah, Mm -hmm. to me, sometimes that's an, that's an act of worship. And, yeah. and Juliet, my dog, is happy about it too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. something very therapeutic about dogs in there. I think, you know, it reminds me of that, that book, Practicing the Presence of God. I think it's Brother Lawrence. Um, it's just that. It's practicing his presence in those moments. We need that time where uh, we are drawing away and, and being with him intentionally and I acknowledge him. It's like acknowledge him in all your ways, you know, be with him. For me, I am a journaler. I journal pretty much every morning, almost in, in mul- most nights. Um, and I too, I read through the Psalms and Proverbs every month. Um, I don't read through the Psalms every month, but I read a Psalm a day and a proverb. Um, so that's like my rhythm. Uh, I'm reading through the Bible right now with our church. But um, even that can become just like reading for knowledge sake, you know? So for me, the, um, the journaling part really helps me interact with the Lord on a deeper level and, um, writing down, um, things that I'm seeing consistently, you know, in his word, music is huge for me, art. And if I have a day, um, at the very least where I can put my headphones in listening to worship music and, with some watercolor or a pen and pencil and some paper and I can just uh, be creative in that way. My ultimate is when everybody's out of the house and I can dance and worship and sing and do art. I mean, I'm, I'm a creative type. And so that really feeds my soul. Um, deep conversations about the Lord. I know that that is not exactly like just one-on-one with the Lord, but that fellowship, um, when you're having meaningful conversation about the Lord, um, even that I think is just precious in my relationship with him. Let's take a few seconds to mention an important resource that can be helpful for support raisers. CMM Press has published another great book that is not only for those who raise their personal support, but also they oversee teams or even an organization whose staff teams raises their own personal support. Scott Morton is a champion for biblically-based ministry partnership development, so I highly recommend that you pick up a copy of his book called Blind Spots. It's available at cmmpress.org, where you can receive a 10% discount if you use the code SRS Podcast. So, as we you know, continue this 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 episode, which is you know really it's again spiritually healthy series, but we're we're talking about it as a as a season. Um, one of the things that Jamie, I think we said, but maybe we haven't brought enough clarity to or a sharp enough point is that um, you do need to prioritize your time with the Lord. That needs to happen, but it yeah. might look different in this season. Right. Your normal rhythms might have been blowed up, yep. <laughs> so to speak, right? Yep. Um, there might be days where you can do it nice and early as you do your Bowflex machine, right? right. <laughs> there's, a, there's other days where you... Um, you might have to get up so early. You're not sure if you want to do it that early because somebody's only availability is at 6 a.m. at Starbucks and you're realizing, oh my goodness, if I'm going to connect with the Lord um, and get some exercise in and all that, I'm going to have to get up at three or four to pull. <laughs> you know? so, um, so it might not always look the exact same. And yet right. we're definitely saying don't abandon it. 
Don't right. be like, oh, I'm doing this spiritual thing, so I'm right. sure it's going to be okay because that's like, I mean, that's like telling your spouse, I love you, and if that ever changes, I'll let you know. Right. Now, there needs to be that time with the Lord. It might look different. It might even be functionally different how you do it, but because he is the why mm-hmm. in, what, in, 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 what, in your support raising, yeah. um, that in your season of raising support, you, you, you do need to figure out what are some ways, maybe not the right. way, what are some ways that in this season I can do soul care? Yeah. I, yeah. I can take care of me. And next level too is, and how can I make sure my spouse and my family are doing well? Yeah. Because those are, I mean, those are big. If those things aren't going well, your support raising is probably not going to go so well. Right. Yeah. And might we reframe <laughs> again, like reframing, but also just, okay, Lord, this is an opportunity for me to get to know you in a new way. And, you know, we always remember that there is grace. We are secure in him. There's nothing that we're going to do that's going to make him, you know, love us less. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But then Lord, how do I, how can, how, how do you want to connect in this season? What is it going to, you know, rather than fighting against that, because even like when you transition to life overseas, it's going to look different. So rather, okay, Lord, it looks a little different this season, but you're my priority. And I think it's that honest piece again, coming back and um, how am I going to connect with him in this season and yeah. making a point of it and just letting that be um, what drives your appointments and what, um, you know, before you get on those phone calls, oh. pause, mm-hmm. take, take a stinking minute, you know, and just mm-hmm. Get still before the Lord. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I often tell people that are, uh, when you have your support raising appointment, be 15 minutes early. I realize mm-hmm. that can't always happen. Yeah. That there's a stillness when you're sitting at that Chick-fil-A or whatever else all by yourself. Good. Somebody's coming in 10 minutes. There's something about that stillness. I Personally, I found that to be a bit of a holy time. Where That's I'm so like, good. Jesus, help, first of all, right? Yeah. <laughs> but also, it's a good time where I'm listening. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, there've been a couple times, Jamie, where I have intended to do one thing and God led me to do something different in that meeting. Yeah. And that only happened because I stilled my heart and I was listening. Yeah. So that has been different asks. I've been really bold asks a couple of times that if I was just kind of working my plan, I would have, you know, asked for X. I ended up asking for Y, which mm-hmm. was significantly different. And yeah. God had already prepared their heart to say yes to that. I was like, man, if I wouldn't have been listening to the Lord, I would have, you know, that, yes, that would have been a big miss. That's Um, right. So, uh, but momentum is big. And so one of the things that I know you and I want to at least touch on here is that, you know, raising support, it shouldn't be something, uh, let me say that differently. Raising support will often go slow and take a long time and be more frustrating if you if you nibble on the edges for months and months and months yeah. versus yeah. embracing it as a season right where you build and maintain a pretty a pretty significant momentum and rhythm and so really what Jamie what you and I are saying is yeah do that get your big mo going but don't do that at the expense of of not prioritizing prioritizing time with the lord mm-hmm. figure out a way to do both, right? Right. Yeah, I think you're right. Momentum is your friend and, and that it needs to be guarded. Like, uh, I think we, we can let, let those things creep in that we said we were going to set aside for a season. It's so easy to do that. So easy. If we can just embrace that this is a season that we are laying aside some things for a season, we've communicated that, we have um, you know, set some boundaries around that. Um, but the one thing we don't want to set aside is our relationship with the Lord. You know? mm. I mean, in our family, of course, but you know what I mean? Um, primarily the, the relationship with the Lord and, um, yeah. Good discussion today. Um, we talked about seasons in some of the other podcasts, but I don't know if we have quite so specifically in regard to connecting that with being spiritually healthy in your support raising season. So, uh, as we go to to wrap up this episode, um, just kind of lead us. Like you know, I love to give you the the last word here. So um, mm-hmm. let's 
go ahead and just kind of remind us a little bit as far as what what people need to remember, what they need to keep in mind uh, so that they can really can be spiritually healthy in what is often uh, a pretty engrossing season of life as people raise their primary support. Yeah, I think we mentioned it in the last one that remembering um, the last podcast, remembering that we are whole beings, you know, we're not just raising support. You know, we're not just um, friends or spouses or whatever. You know, we are whole beings. We are spiritual, um, emotional, mental, physical. And the way that we steward ourselves in those areas is an act of love to God, you know, Mm -hmm. loving Him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so, even in this support raising time, even in this season, we want to embrace it and look for ways that even this process can be a part of that. You know, this process, how can I love him with my mind in this by focusing on what's true about this? Mm. How can I love him with my soul by being honest about where I am in this process and um, and what he's done and, and sharing my passion mm-hmm. for, him, for this area of ministry with other people? You know, um, physical, taking care of your physical body, because that's a foundational piece. It's going to help you make it through this season, um, getting the sleep you need, you know, all those good things, exercise. Um, yeah, I just would encourage people to really, truly embrace this season and allow God to do the good work he wants to do in it. And, um, yeah, it's ministry. It really is. And it's a sweet, it can be, a sweet time of fellowship with the Lord, but we've got to guard that and prioritize that. Good word. Good word. Jamie, thanks again for joining us on the SRS podcast. Mm, So good to be with you, Aaron. Thanks so much. Okay. Thanks for joining us for this episode. We would love to hear your ideas for future content. Please visit supportraisingsolutions.org slash feedback to share your thoughts and questions. Also, wherever you download your podcast from, be sure to subscribe for future episodes and come back each week to gain more insight into the process of building and maintaining your personal support team.